Here's the canvas for my seascape. The top half is grey gesso, and an inch under the halfway mark is the horizon line. The bottom is in black gesso, and it's all been allowed to dry. I'm going to use a couple of one inch brushes, a palette knife, a filbert and a fan brush, and of course, a liner brush. Here's my palette and I'll list the colours down below and of course I'm using my regular disposable paper palette for this project. Today I'm using Bob Ross Liquid Clear and you only need enough for a very very thin coat. I stressed the thin bit and here's a little demo of what I'm expecting you to look for. Um, so I've got my canvas and I've done part of it uh, with just enough so there's a happy smiley face and you can see I run my finger across it and it doesn't leave any kind of residual mark. There's no sort of slug trail and this side of the canvas well i went a little heavy with it and gosh you can see my fingerprints on there you'll be you'll be crying in your beer if you paint on this it'll be very slippery so thin and even coats i'm going to use one of my one inch brushes and i'm going to use some phthalo blue and a little bit of phthalo green i'm going to just mix these on the brush and you can see i tap them together and apply them to the area beneath the horizon line i'm going to scrub it in well and I'm going to leave the corner down here on the left. I'm going to leave that empty. I'm going to put some Van Dyke Brown in there. To test it, I'm going to use my finger. So that's a good strong colour. And that, well, a bit too much oil, not enough paint. And you want the good strong colour for your painting. Or else it'll turn out to be a very grey seascape. Quick dry clean. And then straight into Van Dyke Brown. And that's just in that corner. And I blend that in really well. I'm going to use by the clean dry brush with some Indian yellow. Pull out a small amount and just tap your brush and then down here in this bottom left hand corner. Now I'm going to run through my sky pretty briskly because I really want to get on to painting the seascape. So firstly Indian yellow, then I add a little titanium white and then I add a little bit of yellow ochre. Blend them all together and then bright red. And I'm going to just blend that out really well. I want the red and the yellow ochre to shake hands a little bit. They make a nice sort of orangey colour. Blend, blend, blend. The final colour for my background sky is Stalo Blue. And this is a real powerful colour. So you see I put a little bit on and just too strong. So I add a little bit of white to it. And it's a good idea to test your colours and if they're just too strong adjust things before you paint too much of the sky. It's much easier to fix it than to try and take it off. In here I want to start painting a little cloud and, and I like to use the handle of my fan brush to drop in a little sketch. You can design the way your clouds look and if you don't like them, well, use the magic eraser, the one that you got attached to your hand, just to rub it out. I'm going to mix up a colour, a mauve colour for my clouds. I'm going to use a nice little bit of the alizarin crimson and a little dot of thalo blue. The blue is very much stronger and I'm going to mix these together well and as you can see I'm trying to get a nice little mauve colour. And there it is appearing on my palette. There it is. And really mix these in well. Now this is a, a really strong colour and I want to make it a little bit sort of more pastel. So I'm going to use my fan brush and I'm just going to go into some white and blend this together. I'm looking for a soft mauve colour. Now back to my canvas and I'm going to use just the corner of my fan brush and I'm going to use the letter C. C for cloud. Play on that little blue area. There we go, little letter C. Just touch and give it a little flick and build up the little patch of paint with lots of little letter C's. Leave a few holes in it here and there and this gives you a nice sort of soft bubbly patch of colour. Nice flat base to it. There. I dry cleaned that one inch brush I used to paint the background sky and this time I want to use just these few hairs on the corner and I mean just literally maybe a dozen 20 odd hairs and I want to use just the corner of the brush just to blend this gently. You're not looking to overdo it. You want to keep some of those little higher spots and dark spots available, but you just want to fluff it up a 
little bit. Soften it. Blend it. Make it nice and smooth. Dissolve the odd edge. Leave some bits harder. Really make it look lovely and fluffy and soft. That bottom edge is a little bit hard for me, so I'm going to just take my brush, just lay it flat, and just dab at it. Pat. Pick up some colour and move it along. Make a nice point at the edge of the cloud and really just dab it in. Soften it up completely. And just like that, we have a cloud. Doesn't take but a second. Let's add a, another little one above him, I think. I want to add a little bit of a headland in the far left side. And for this, I'm going to use some of this grubby white, a little dark sienna, and I'm just going to loosely mix these together. I may even add a little bit of red into it, just to warm it up as a fraction. And leave it nice and marbly. And I'm going to be using, I'm going to use the fan brush again for this. I'll give it a dry clean. There we go. And pick up a little bit of this sort of soft brown colour. Nice soft colour. I want it to look nice and distant. And as you see, I left a little piece there just on the horizon line. Um, I'm just going to tap this in. Just use the corner of the fan brush. And think of this as being covered in vegetation. I'm going to put a, a palm tree or two on there. And again, if you want, you can just sketch this with the end of your brush. So it give you an idea on the proportions. And just tap this on. Let the, let the brush do the work, though. You don't have to do any real detail it's too far away but you can create some lovely sort of soft edges here just by pressing and dabbing with the brush give the impression of depth and distance I'm going to add a little more dark sienna to my brush I'm going to tap in another little layer let it sort of blend with the underpainting a bit I'm just looking for some soft detail here nothing really too hard and again just dab it in create some little soft textures and once I'm happy with this little stage I'm probably going to add a few more little touches of even darker sienna Or dark sienna. So we've sort of got three soft, distinct layers all blended together. I want to add the suggestion of a palm tree or two, and for this, I'm going to use my liner brush and a little drop of thinners. Just want to thin my paint down so that it's nice and runny like ink, and roll my brush through it, and then up here on the distance of my little headland and just put in a couple of little suggestions of tree trunks not too dark Ooh, they look a bit dark to me I just light my color up a little bit keep them nice and small just put some little crisscrosses on top just a, a suggestion of a, a palm tree maybe maybe I'll add a, another one here maybe one here keep them very light though not too distinct Maybe I'll add, add a couple more just to sort of finish it off. Time to sketch our wave. And I want to be down in this bottom third, over towards the left, just under the headland. And that'll be the top of my wave. And I like to put in the floor of the wave. And this is just a very shallow angle. Notice not too steep. It'll make the wave look like it's sort of coming to you at a funny angle. But this wants to be a very shallow line. Just a, a sketch. So at this stage you can move it around. And again, don't get this too steep. That's the top. And it's going to be crashing to the left. So I use the corner of my fan brush. Just a little bit of dirty white paint. And I like to just make a little mark where I'm going to have that wave crash. Now, it builds from the right 
crashes on the left. So this side of the wave wants to be lower and heading down towards the floor of the wave. It can be wobbly, it doesn't have to be nice and straight, just up and down a little bit. And then to the left of the peak of the wave is going to be the, the crash, the bit where it tips over onto the beach. In the background, I want to just put in the suggestion of a few little waves and just use that little sort of soft sort of dipping stroke at the back. There we go. Remember, in the back ground, the waves are going to be more compressed and pushed together. And you want to bunch them up a little bit. And as you come forwards, you're going to start leaving a little bit more of the shadow of the sea, a little bit dark, because the light's very low on the horizon. Maybe a little brighter here in the centre too. Now, if you overdo it, you can easily recover it. Just pick up a palette knife. You'll see me do a bit of that. And then just scrape out some of that light colour. And this isn't white. I'm using dirty white, off-white. White with a little bit of the yellow in it. But think about this area. This is a light path from the background to the foreground. And you'll see how that works a little later in my painting. And before you know it, we have... A little background C. Easy as that. These little areas of dark are really critical because they actually tell you that there is some height and depth in the water. It's not just flat. And I like to pick out a little area where I'm going to make a little distant wave. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a white cap on top of that little wave. And I'm going to go right above some of those little dark areas. So there's a little shadow. The light's coming from the back, so it's just highlighting the top edge of that wave, but casting a shadow on the water this side of it. Complicated to explain in words, but I think you get the idea. Now, a little bit more work. Brighten this up a little tiny bit more. I think my brush is a bit too stumpy for this job, and I might just switch out to a slightly softer brush. Look carefully at the seascape. I'm going to scrape off some paint. Here's that tough brush and here's a softer, smaller brush. Now watch carefully as my sea recovers some of its dark. Did you see that? I just scratched out some of the white to reveal a little bit more shadow here and there. And then go back and just retouch with this new brush. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit nicer. It forms a nicer edge. So don't ever settle for it being just so-so. Just Go back and make a few little changes. Your seascapes look so much better if you do those little touches. I'm really happy how this is looking, but if I needed to, I could go back in and scrape out some of that white paint and recover them again. If I wanted to make that bigger, I could scrape the paint out there too. But I'm really happy with it. I think it looks nice and distant, but just in case you want to see, this is how you do it. Put a knife really firmly against it and just scrape away some of that paint and just sort of make things look a little bit sort of smaller it's a very simple way of repairing a seascape that gets a little bit too much highlight on it and loses a little bit of its shadow there we go just trim these little waves up it's a nice little touch simple to do there we go and think about how the wave has that nice little crest to it and I'm going to use a filbert brush this I just want to blend that edge and just think about how how waves rise up tip over and then they crash you're trying to get that shape into your waves all the time that it'll rise and fall and some little waves are still on the way up and other little crests are crashing over just with a little bit of soft blending so let's let's just a little bit of a wave in here too. I see a little opportunity here to sneak something in. Let's scrape out a little bit of that highlight. There we go. I've made a new shadow and blend that base out a little bit because it doesn't really matter the order you do things. You can you can scrape out, put the shadow in, get the shape going, and then put the foam on top or the other way around. Foam first, then scrape out the shadow. And it doesn't really matter. You decide what works best for you. Here we go, a little bit of a, a foamy top to this little wave. It's just a little fur. Simple as that. And maybe give them a little bit of a shape. Just 
grab a little bit of that foam. There we go. Make it look like it's curving into the face of the wave. So that's part one of my seascape. And if you've enjoyed this, join me for part two. And in the meantime, you might like to subscribe and watch some other videos I've done. Watch this one next.